We go to Mecham, Kansas City. We take 24 cars to sell. Furthermore, we got us a new little Canon handheld video camera. And Mark's like, I'm down for it. Let's see what we get on film. So Mark is an ace photographer, okay? He can set up and make any shot look amazing. It's a camcorder, I guess. A really nice camcorder. Those are our buyers. So this was a different in that there were no hot models laying across the hoods. There was a bunch of old guys buying and selling cars. What motor? The 327 300 order. Okay. Another big thing on this thing is the uh, microphone. It's the real deal. I don't even know what this is called. I know everything in the uh, still world, but in the video world, I have no idea. But I know this is good. So this is Mark's first time out with his little slick camera that we're going to get some new polished stuff to put out there on the interwebs for all you guys to see. Uh, but I think he didn't tighten up the uh, little the, the microphone on, on the receiver end. And we got a bunch of cracking and sparkling and whatnot. So if you hear some of that, that's just from inexperience, but not from lack of wanting to try. So anytime we go to auction, there is a little adrenaline rush. And let's face it, I mean, we're gypsies on the road. And part of, part of what keeps us going and what fuels that is the need for another buy, the need for a sell, a deal, a deal somewhere. Uh, so anytime we go to these auctions, it's like you get a shot, all right? And that's why we go to these things every other weekend. It's buying, it's selling. It's not only that, but it's also the people, the camaraderie, um, and the cars. It's all for the love of the cars. So the Meekum one's cool just because of the venue. Kansas City on its own downtown is awesome. Um, I love going to Kansas City. Lots to do, good places to eat. Uh, it's a nice place to explore. Um, so Meekum's Kansas City is a very, very good venue. Uh, I would say one of the best. I like dealing with Scotty because there's no, uh, not a lot of bull. Um, you know, he knows what's going on. He definitely knows what's going on. He knows where you're at, you know, what, what you're trying to do. You know, he's one of the guys that basically invented the game. This suite has got air conditioning, it's got dual card setup. So we bought this little blue Alpha that was fully restored, nice leather interior, a killer paint job. Uh, it's sitting right, got a nice set of mini lights on it, and it rolls up on the block. Crickets. Nobody's interested. Fuck, I don't hold a whole lot of uh, hope, but hope springs eternal. I, I knew it wasn't going to settle. Wrong crowd. Wrong crowd. Cool car, wrong crowd. So, do I hold out much hope here in Kansas City for a esoteric Alfa Romeo dryer? Probably not. But you know, you never know. So then we bring our other European car, and that's our little uh, BMW 2002 Roundy. So we're here at Meekum, Kansas City, and we're trying to do a little something different. Instead of selling muscle, we bring European cars, not sell them. It's a unique idea. You might ask yourself, how do I make money doing that? I'm asking myself that. Those cars are really hot right now. But they're not hot in the Midwest. And so the car rolls up, and once again, crickets. Uh, what can you do, you know? All you can do is try. Now, Meekum's main tagline is, nobody sells more muscle than Meekum. And that's what they sell, muscle. And what did we sell? Muscle. And we were willing to, you know, sell that car basically. I wanted $22,000 for that car, which is very low on the retail level. If the car was completely, you know, a real round, a 73 or 72 round tail, they sell anywhere from 30 to 50 thousand dollars. We know we sell them, uh, but expecting 22 grand for this, I thought for sure it was going to sell. Came over the block and nobody, absolutely nobody. So even a dealer could have bought that and flipped that around. So a car still on a retail weight level, worth 29, 30 thousand dollars. So. This is another, you know, another point proven that Euro cars don't sell at Meekum very well. We're fishing now, we're fishing. So every time a car comes up on the block, right, you don't know who's out there. And, and it's the auctioneer's job to hook you up, no pun intended, while you're fishing, with a buyer. So you got your hook in the water and you're out there looking, right? You starting, you're starting in the basement. So if you want 40 grand, they're gonna start around 10,000, 10, 10, 10, 10, 25, 25, 30, 35, 40. 
Now, you've only got about a minute to find somebody, maybe a minute and a half. That's your fun in the sun. Uh, and that's enough time to find out if there's somebody raising their hand or giving their nod or rubbing their nose or so in, showing some interest at all. In the case of 20 of our cars, nobody was interested. We all know why we're there and you know, usually we're, I mean, in our case, we're taking our, you know, some of our cars have been around a while and we're ready to at least, you know, get our money back or a little bit more. So we're willing to make deals, you know, absolutely. How much do you really take for? 35. <laughs> I got that much in it. So. And when another dealer comes up to us and says, hey, what do you really need out of it? And we tell them and they try to cut you another six, seven grand. It's just like, come on, man. Custom slant now. That's all we need to know right there. That's all you need to know. When I see a slant known as Porsche coming up in the lineup for sale, Mark and I eye it up real quick. And the first thing it says on the line is slant notes conversion. Well, that's just a death. Because what they did was take a perfectly good Porsche and put plastic parts on it and turn it into a kit car. No one wants them. No one wants the slant nose anymore. It used to be, you know, Scott used to buy them, you know, 10, 15 years ago and sell them like crazy. But the guys that are, you know, buying the Porsches now are a little bit younger and they don't really prefer the slant nose like the older guys do. Here's the deal. Slant nose was all the shit, right? When they came out, factory slant nose from Porsche, everybody took their cars, sent them off to be converted. They converted mostly with glass fenders. My guess is this is a glass fender car, and it ain't worth shit. As I remember on, on Johnny Carson, and that guy that used to spin the plate, you have to fucking run around and spin the plate before him. That's me. That's you at breakfast. That's me at breakfast, just spinning plate. I've got 250 cars at this facility, and I always have to keep the balls in the air. So if I find that one of these girlfriends just isn't getting sold, it's time to go. Yeah. Hey, whoa! Fucking miracles happen. That, don't, that won't pay the shipping bill. Sometimes, you know, you have expectations of what you want to get for a car. And you know, have that number in your head, and it comes against the, come, comes on the block, and you need to sell it, or it might have been your fourth auction. You're taking this car, and you tried to sell this car for a year, and you just keep throwing money at it, trying to sell it. Comes around on the block, and they have a real money on that's you know not at what you want for it, but close. And then you got to start thinking right there in the next 10, 15 seconds. You know, is it worth selling it right now, or is it worth holding? Absolutely, I know a Scotty car. Something that's a uh, different marquee, something that's different than a Chevrolet, a Ford, uh, something that's a little strange, a little off the wall. I mean, it's like a magnet to him. You know he's going to get on it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't mind people mentioning the fact that that's a Scotty car. And I'll tell you what, what a Scotty car is. When that car rolls up on the block and everybody starts laughing at it, all right, and, and it's like, oh, well, everybody else is kind of embarrassed to raise their hand because people are laughing. Um, I don't have a problem with that. That just shows that they might not be all that knowledgeable about it at the time, or it's just a little too far out there for them. But once again, it comes down to the audience that's in a, in a given auction at any given time. And those are physical people. But to tell you what, while there might be three to 500 people in that room, there's seven billion people on this planet and I'm always going to find that person who loves it. I've known Scott Brandt for well over 20 years. Uh, I've known him really well from him doing business at our auctions, but I also met Scott a long time ago attending other auctions. Uh, so he's attended auctions. He's been a cornerstone of the collector car hobby for probably 25, 30 years. Uh, what I've always had tremendous respect about Scott is, is he always takes the risk on a unique, piece of merchandise. When that car comes up on the block, I look at that car, I assess the car, and within 30 seconds, I know whether I'm gonna buy, bid, or pass. And that goes on all day long, because I am willing to buy anything that's put on the money. He's six. That is the Scotty car. There's a lot of Scotty cars, a lot of Moto X cars, but that is the car, because Pantera's are, right. I mean, Scott, we're very similar that we kind of like love everything. We're not really just, you know, brands of like, we're not just Ford guys, we're not just Chevy guys. We truly do like it all. Um, there's a couple certain cars I really, really love. 
and one of the cars, he truly, truly has passion more, which just passion for all these things, but the one he really does with the Pantera's. Well, well, the bidding process was, was a little bit different because we were, you know, filming. We knew we, were, we, we knew we wanted that car. We kind of moved from where we normally sit in the front row off to the sidelines, so kind of throw anybody off that might think that Scotty's bidding on that car, right? Give me 84. I'll get him back. They're pushing and pushing. I'm bidding against an alleged guy on the telephone, right? You know, the horns are honking and this and that. Meanwhile, the TV camera's in my face, the grinder is in my face, uh, the ringman, the ringman, and the ring girl, so uh, they're both trying to get me to come off of where I was at. He had a $100,000 reserve, he'll take it off at 85. Dana walks up to me. He knows where his seller has got to be. And uh, so, you know, I mean, 10% commission on $80,000, that's eight grand. That's a lot of money. Do 85 in if that helps. No, no, no. 83,000. I'm trying. 85,000. Give me 90 all in. Everybody else could bid. 83. That's a half a million. 85. 585 and negative 85,000. 83. 85 and negative 85. So at the end of the day, Dana comes to me with an offer, I countered him, and we made a deal. I think he made one heck of a buy on it. Uh, you know, he, I think the rest of the crowd was asleep today on that car. That was worth the trip. Buying that Pantera was worth the trip.